Georgia Counts. Koji. knew everything about you, but when I told you I was going to bless you, I need you to believe what I told you. Uh, look at somebody and tell him he's going to do it. When you read in scripture, it tells us God can not lie. And so God says, when I open my mouth, it shall not return to me void. We've got to start acting like he said what he said. But some of you don't understand that God's getting ready to hook you up. God's getting ready to cause blessings to flow into you. Things are happening. What you've got to start doing is rejoicing and shouting about what's already being done. Is there anything too hard for God? Uh, you better help me preach. I got to leave you all. Look at somebody and tell them, I'm glad he restored me. I'm glad I can say restoration has finally come. I've been restored to my place. Georgia counts. Koji counts. Have you registered today? I've got my five. The Church of God in Christ has a tremendous opportunity to fulfill our civic duty by registering five family members or friends in our community for this year's election. Tuesday, November 3rd, 
we're encouraging all of our members to register to vote young adults from 18 to 35 years old. Let's extend our protests to the ballot box. Register at rocks.online forward slash C-O-G-I-C. Hashtag arrive with five. Georgia counts. Kojic counts. Well, hey, everybody, it's Pastor Martin. Grateful to have you with us on this morning. And, of course, uh, we are live. That's right. Uh, this is live. It's not pre-recorded. Uh, I'm live today. Grateful to have you with us. I see you as you come in today. Hey, 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 everybody. It is so good to be here. It's good to be in the land of the living. It's good to have you with us on this morning. And I'm grateful to God that you tuned in on today. Um, this is uh, my, um, of course, uh, first live since uh, dealing with uh, COVID-19 uh, as for Sunday morning. And I do want to uh, thank Sister uh, Brittany Davis for standing in for me on uh, last Sunday. And uh, so I thought I would come live today directly to you rather than uh, doing the recording. I uh, wanted to be able to uh, share with you today. And uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, let me uh, just uh, say, do me a favor. Please share this with someone or, uh, you know, start a watch party or something today. And um, uh, just uh, share it with someone today as we're sharing. I uh, want to thank God for uh, Lady Martin. And I uh, want to thank God for all of you uh, that uh, have joined me. Uh, Lady Martin, I want to thank her for organizing the uh, prayers that uh, they did for me while I was in the hospital. And thank all of you for praying and many of you that have reached out to me. I really appreciate uh, your prayers. I really thank God for you. I want to thank God for RRC, of course. Uh, you've done, uh, you've been uh, outstanding and uh, just want to thank God for you. I'm not going to be here long, not going to stay here long, but I do want to talk to you today for just a few minutes uh, from the Word of God and share with you today. Um, and I believe and know that God is going to uh, bless you as we're sharing today. Uh, thank you for those that are watching on our website, those that are watching on uh, YouTube and uh, uh, on here on Facebook. We're grateful. Let me share with you for just a few uh, minutes, Acts chapter 4, um, uh, uh, chapter 4, verse 13 through 16 says, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. And beholding the man which was healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, We shall do, what shall we do to these men? For indeed a notable miracle has been done by them, is manifested to all that dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. I want to talk to you today very brief about notable miracles that can't be denied. I preached this many, many years, years ago. God gave me this message, and I want to share it with you. Notable miracles that can't be denied. And that's what God is getting ready to do. And I know it's been a year that we've never experienced before. But I want to tell you that God is getting ready to give us notable miracles that cannot be denied. When you think of miracles, everyone defines miracles a different way. Uh, when you think about miracles, uh, there are people and there's a great interest in miracles today. You hear them talk about miracles on TV and all of those type of things. Uh, they talk about miracles, but uh, even in sports, they talk about a miracle. They talk about how things happen when someone catches 
the ball. They say that's a miracle. When someone uh, does a one-hand catch, they say that's a miracle. When someone uh, great makes a great comeback, they talk about miracles. When they uh, Years ago, when the U.S. hockey team won, they talked about miracles. And uh, I want to tell you, those are good things, but they are not miracles. <laughs> not at all. They're not miracles. When you think of a miracle and uh, deal with miracles, everyone, of course, deals with miracles a little different. But let me share with you, a miracle is when God sets aside the natural order of the world and intercedes with supernatural power in such a way that can't be explained by science or logic. When, when God gives miracles, even like he did in the scripture and in the Bible, you'll find when God gave miracles, even in the word, in Exodus chapter 14, verse 21 to 22, when Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and the Lord caused the sea to go back with a strong east wind all that night and made the sea dry land and the water was divided and the children of Israel marched across on dry ground. Now that was a miracle because it, it makes no sense. You don't see that happening today. But God gave them a miracle when he uh, stretched out his hand and pushed the water back and they walked across on dry shop. A miracle is when God does something unexpected, changing the natural flow of events. When God begins to change the natural flow of events, uh, when you think of that, God uses and gives miracles. This is why we should never use the term miracle lightly. We should never deal with it and use it lightly. We should always understand that when God gives a miracle, we don't deal with it lightly. So let me talk for just a few minutes about notable miracles that God is getting ready to give us that cannot be denied. Many times we must understand that we are, when we are dealing with things, uh, we are dealing with the miracle itself. Everyone's looking for a miracle. Someone even one time said that uh, the day of miracles are over. In other words, they say those things don't happen anymore. That's uh, what happened in the Bible. And if it even happened then, the day of miracles are over. Well, I contend with you, and uh, I, I know this is going to sound strange to some of you, but I even agree with that statement, if you're going to use it, that the day of miracles are over. Matter of fact, I'm going to go even further than talking about the day of miracles are over. I'm going to say to you, and I know it's going to shock some of you, you're going to be shocked when you hear me say this, but I want to say to you that there has never been a day of miracles. Now, I know it's real quiet, but uh, let me... I just want to tell you, there's never been a day of miracles. Uh, and I know some of you, you're about ready to click me and go to something else. But uh, give me just a minute to explain it to you, because I want to tell you that there has never been a day of miracles. Never been a day of miracles. Somebody says, ooh, the day of miracles. And we've seen miracles, and we've seen this. And we've seen it back in Bishop Mason's day, and we've seen it back in this. But now let me tell you what the real thing is. There's never been a day of miracles, but there's always been a God of miracles. All right? I think you got it now. There's never been a day of miracles, but there's always been a God of miracles. I want you to type that in the subject line, the God of miracles. He's the God of miracles because if if he's if we're dealing with just a day of miracles, then we're limited. But the God of miracles is not limited to days, times. He can give you a miracle at any time and give you a miracle anywhere. All right? He can give you a miracle at any time and a miracle anywhere. So he's not limited to Monday. If there was just a day of miracles, it could be on a Monday or uh, maybe you can get a miracle. It's like in the scripture. You remember in the Bible when uh, the man was at the pool of Bethesda. You remember him being there. And you remember while he was there, uh, the, the angel came down to trouble the water. And it was only at a certain season that they could get a miracle. And whoever got in first 
got a miracle. But you remember when Jesus came, Jesus came by, and what did Jesus do? Jesus came by, and when he began to move, you find out that when Jesus said, pick up your bed and walk, you don't need to get in the water. You don't need the season. I'm the God of miracles. And so I'm going to give you a miracle right now. And that's what he did. He gave him a miracle then. The, the woman with the issue of blood, she had tried everything. And if it was just a day of miracles, she wouldn't be, wouldn't be healed. But when Jesus stopped by, guess what happened? When Jesus stopped by, Jesus, uh, she decided I'm going to get to him and touch the hem of his garment. And she was healed. Why? Because he's a God of miracles. And I want you to remember that. Remember that when you need a miracle, you don't have to wait on a season, a day, a time, an hour. God can give you a miracle in the midnight hour. He can give you a miracle on your job. He can give you a miracle while you're riding down the highway because he is the God of miracles. All right? You got that? He's a God of miracles. So we experience miracles and we give God praise. Uh, our situations may change, but he is the God of miracles. And how many of us have, have to admit that we miss the miracle from God because sometimes we miss miracles because it just didn't make no sense. I mean, sometimes God tells us to do stuff and miracles are attached to it and we don't do it because it just don't make any sense. It makes no sense to do that. It makes no sense to do it that way. Why should I do that? That makes absolutely no sense. But think about it. Sometimes we, we don't, we, we, we just, we miss it because we say, well, that, that I don't make, that don't make no sense. I, I, uh -uh. But now remember in the scripture, and I'm, I'm just about done, y'all. I'm not going to be alone. In 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 9 through 14, you remember Naaman with his horse and uh, he was sick and going through <clears throat> and he went to Elisha. He went to Elisha and sent a message unto him and he wanted to be clean because he was a leopard. He was, he it was sick. And Elijah told him to go and wash in Jordan seven times. Uh, <laughs> he said, go wash in Jordan seven times and your flesh shall come again to you and you will be clean. And, and remember he was wrought and he says, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. There's some clean waters you could tell me to go to. <clears throat> Why would you tell me to go and wash in Jordan? And it wasn't until his servant said, if he'd asked you to do a hot thing, you would have done it. You would have done the hot thing. And he says, why not do this? And he went and did it, and he was healed. <clears throat> How many times have we missed God because of the fact that it just didn't seem like it made sense? Even though God told us, I got, I'm going to give you a miracle. He could have told you to just jump, run. But we, wanna, we want it to be mystical. So we can look like we got a miracle. Yeah. It's what I call the hard task of small commands. You know, people don't have a problem with doing stuff when it's, when it seems like it's hard and difficult. But sometimes the small command is what we miss out on. He don't tell us to do anything big. He just do, said, do this. And I'm going to move for you. And so many times we miss miracles <clears throat> because we don't do those things. There comes a time, and I'm just about done. <clears throat> there comes a time when God sets you up for notable miracles. And when it's done, only God can get the glory out of what's been done. That's why when God sets us up for notable miracles, he sets us up because he wants to get the glory only. That's why he won't let you others do things so they can get credit for it. So you have to always give them credit and acknowledge them 
for what they did, said, brought to the table. Sometimes God will give you miracles, set you up, that when you get through, you'll only be able to say to God be the glory for the things he has done. Only God gets the glory for this. I'm almost through, y'all. <clears throat> when a notable miracle is going to be set up, God will let you know, I've done it to get glory out of it. In Exodus chapter 14, verse 3 through 4, he says, For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, They are entangled in the land, and the wilderness have shut them in. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, that he shall follow after them. And I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all the hosts, that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. God says it's going to look like they shed in. But the reason it's going to look like they shed in is because I'm going to get some glory out of this. And I want to tell you, when God looks like your back is against the wall, look like nothing's working, sometimes God's setting you up for a notable miracle that can't be denied. Because when he brings you out, no one can deny that it had to be God. When it looks like you're entangled. Same thing in Daniel chapter 3, verse 16 through 30. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were in there. But God set them up for a notable miracle. Well, how did he do it? When you read, uh, they couldn't deny that the fire was hot enough. Because the men, according to the scripture, the men that took Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego up to the fire, they got consumed. So when God brought them out and they looked in and said, I see four men loose and walking and the form of the fourth looks like the son of God. They could not deny. Couldn't say, well, the reason they didn't get burned up, the fire wasn't hot enough. No, because the people that you put in didn't never they didn't even get in the fire and they got burned up. So when God sets you up for a notable miracle that can't be denied, he's just getting glory that no one can say, no, no, that didn't, God said, no, 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 no. Look at the miracle that I've given them. So he's given us notable miracles. Same thing he did with Daniel. When he put him in the lion's den, according to Daniel chapter 6, verse 16 through 27, God gave a notable miracle, brought him out. Why? Because it's something that could not be denied. I want to tell you in this text, and I'm going to leave it. When you read in this text, uh, you find that uh, Peter and John uh, were going to the hour of prayer. And they saw a man at the gate. And according to the scripture, he had been there a while. And when they saw him, the man asked of arms of them. And when they told him, we don't have anything, but look on us. And silver and gold have we none, but such as we have, give I to you in the name of Jesus. They uh, spoke to him and he jumped up and got healed. When you read in this, in the third chapter, we read in Acts chapter 4. Well, they said it couldn't be denied, but in chapter 3, the man was healed at the gate called Beautiful. And when he was leaping up and running and giving God praise, the people saw him walking and praising God. Now, when you read in the fourth chapter, verse 22, the man was about 40 years old. So it was not like he was a child. So you couldn't say, well, <clears throat> eventually... He was going to walk anyway. No. This is a grown man. Had been there at the gate. More than likely people knew him. They, they probably looked for him at the gate every day. No, Probably people have been giving him money and everything. But when these men came, he found it unusual that they said, Silver and gold have we none. But such as we have, we give unto you. And when they uh, prayed for him, he jumped up 
got his leg stripped back immediately and got up and began to uh, give God praise and give him glory. And the scripture says when he came in, when he went into the temple, he went in praising God. That's what the scripture said. He was leaping, stood up, walked, and entered with them into the temple, walking, leaping, and praising God. It says that in Acts chapter 3, verse 8 and 9, and when all the people saw him walking and praising God, they saw him giving God praise and giving God glory. They got excited. They began to say, oh my God, that, that's him. And they got excited about him praising God and everything. And uh, they, they said, look, they got together and pulled uh, they got together and pulled to the side and said, you know what? What are we going to do with these men? For indeed, a notable miracle. Notice what he said, notable. And when you deal with that word notable, it means uh, worthwhile. It means uh, notable, worth, worthy of note, a notice, remarkable. When you hear uh, notable, it was a notable miracle. They they said it, it, we, we are noticing. It's something that happens that it, it, it's not hid, it's not in the corner. And when God gives miracles, notable miracles, it, it's something that everyone sees. The word got out. The word was out that, it, it, that you were done. But God gave a what? Notable miracle. When he gives you a notable miracle, he's going to give you a miracle that CNN can't deny, ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox, none of them will be able to deny when God gives you a miracle. Let me say to you, <clears throat> I was in um, the hospital on uh, August 20th. Uh, they admitted me in the hospital with COVID-19. And uh, Lady Martin, uh, she made me go to the hospital. Uh, and uh, thank God for her making me go. So I went to the hospital and uh, they admitted me to the hospital. And first day or two I was there, uh, they put this thick, thick uh, uh, oxygen thing on me. And uh, then they came in and said, we've got to change your room. And I was like, huh? They said, we're going to take you to uh, ICU. And of course, I don't know about you, but whenever I hear ICU when it comes to the hospital, that sort of troubles me. So they said, we're taking you to ICU, and they took me to ICU, and this thing still, I could hear this oxygen. I mean, I could hear blowing. Uh, if I just pulled a thing out my nose, it was blowing so hard, and I put it back. And so I was in ICU a couple of days, and um, believing God. And so whenever the doctors came in, uh, they always had different doctors come in, and they asked, well, how are you doing? I said, I'm doing okay. And they would talk about my oxygen level and my breathing and all of that. And I was like, I had no clue what they were talking about. All I knew is they said, you are, uh, you've got fluid in your lungs. You are on a hundred percent oxygen, which I guess once I found out later, that means that, uh, I was struggling to breathe and the oxygen was helping, <clears throat> helping me to do that. And so, um, as I was laying there, you know, it was a mental uh, battle because I'm dealing with uh, this. And, and, and of course, you're wondering uh, because you've heard all these things on the news. Am I coming up out of here? And you're wondering about the stuff that you left, your family that you left, all these things. And you're going through these changes and, and you're wondering what in the world is going on. And so while I'm there, uh, there are three things that I want to tell you that happened and that deals with this notable miracle. The first thing is I began to, um, I began to think, God, now you, you've given me all these promises and some of them were recently, and I've got a word that you've given me directly. Then you've given me a word from people that I know are uh, creditable when it, when it comes to the prophetic gift. And, um, even my state supervisor uh, back in December, one day me and Lady Marm were coming home and she called me on the phone and uh, Mother Rogers and she said, uh, the Lord told me, call you. And she said, he, I, I was going to wait later. He said, call him now. 
and she began to minister to me about some things that the Lord was getting ready to do. And uh, I, I began to remind God, I said, God, now you, you, I got promises that's still out there that you haven't done. And I'm laying in this hospital and wondering, am I coming up out of here? And so I began to replay in my mind and talk to God about those things he had said. Secondly, one day when the doctors came in and he said to me, uh, I, I, cause every day they come out, I'll be like, when can I go home? And he's like, well, you can't go home yet. You, you got COVID-19 and we got, they gave me plasma and all that. And he said, you can't, you can't go home. All right. So, uh, he said, you're going to be here probably about, I said, well, how long am I going to be here? About four weeks, maybe. And I'm like, in my mind. Uh-uh, that's too long. I, I can't be gone that long. I got, uh -uh. So when everyone was out the room, I took my hand because I had all these things on my chest to monitor my heart. So I took my hand and put it on my own chest. And I said, Lord, I command this breathing and oxygen levels to come to normal. I command it to happen. I command you to uh, do it. I command it in Jesus name for it to happen and come to normal. The breathing. When they came back in, they said, uh, your oxygen levels are coming up. They're getting better and uh, we're still monitoring you. The, then I began to think, I said, Lord, you know, years ago, you gave me a word to minister to people and you told me to talk about notable miracles that can't be denied. And I began to pray. I said, God, Give me a notable miracle that can't be denied. I want you to move for me. I want you to amaze these doctors. Let them be amazed that you brought me out. Let them be amazed that my breathing and oxygen levels have come up. Give me a notable miracle. Well, in the midst of praying, I want to tell you what happened. They came in one morning and the nurse came in and said, well, uh, Mr. Martin, how you doing? I said, I'm fine. She said, well, you're out, you're out of ICU. I said, oh, thank God. And uh, they said, we're just looking for another room to take you to. So eventually they took me to another room. And once I got to the other room, uh, I said, well, what kind of room is this? They said, well, this is a upgrade to uh, from where you were. And so I said to them, well, that means the next step I'll be out of here. She said, more than likely. So when they came in, when they switched the room this time, they took that thick oxygen out and I could still hear it going. And she put the smaller tube in and reduced the oxygen level. And uh, I was there for about a day there. Then they took me to another room. And uh, that Sunday morning when they came in, Saturday, they put me in the room that Sunday morning when they came in, uh, she came in and said, we can take this off now. You don't need it. They took it completely off sit me in a chair and said, we're going to be here. Uh, they came in and did some therapy to see, make sure I could move my limbs. Then the last young lady that came in because the doctor said, if you pass this test, we're going to let you out of here. The last young lady that came in, they hooked some to my finger and I had to walk around the room about eight minutes. And she said, if your level doesn't drop uh, past 90, then we're going to see. And, and it stayed up and I'm walking and talking and, um, they came back and said, we're going to let you go home. So I'm here to tell you that God will give notable miracles that can't be denied. When I did my virtual uh, visit, I came home Sunday. I did a virtual visit with the doctor on Thursday. And he said to me, uh, I've seen many cases where people didn't come out. He said, and in your case, your lungs were damaged when you came in. You shouldn't have came out. This should have went another way. He said, but you came out. He came very short of saying God gave you a miracle. But I'm not going to come short of that. I'm telling you that God will give you notable miracles that can't be denied. And so I want to share with you in my closing that God is getting ready <clears throat> to give us notable miracles. God's getting ready to do some things. God's getting ready to bless us. And the king's heart, according to Proverbs 21 and 1, is in the hand of the Lord, and he turned it whithersoever he will. 
God is getting ready. And I'm getting ready to pray before we leave today because I believe that there's somebody here. I'm here to tell you that once God has brought you out, once you've seen the hand of God, I know there are people, I know people that went in that didn't come out. And I know people that went in that came out that had to go through therapy. They couldn't talk. But God gave me a miracle. I reminded myself of the word of God. God, you said notable miracles that can't be denied. And that's what God is getting ready to give somebody here, a notable miracle that cannot be denied. He's going to bless you. He's going to move for you. God made, uh, brought us out. Uh, Dio was in. God brought him out. Oh, look at God. God is a wonder, y'all. And you can't tell me that he won't give miracles. And so I want to tell you in any situation, not just in the hospital, not just dealing, dealing with uh, the uh, COVID-19, <clears throat> but I'm going to tell you that God is going to give miracles even today that will not be denied. God's going to move for you. I'm going to pray and believe God. The late um, uh, Bishop Patterson song, a song says, you are just right for a miracle. It says you're just right for a miracle when your back is against the wall and you feel like you're about to fall. You are just right for a miracle. So when you can't see it, expect it. When you can't feel it, expect it. A miracle you shall receive. All you have to do is believe. You are just right for a miracle. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. God is still working miracles. His word overrides everything. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to be talking to you. The doctor said, and he said to, to my wife, um, we got him on 100%. We have done all we can do for him. And the doctor said to me, the last thing I want to do is to sedate you and put you on a ventilator. But God gives notable miracles that can't be denied. My God. And so I want to pray for you. Those of you that may be, maybe you're dealing with something else. Maybe a sickness or maybe something dealing with a job or whatever it may be. But you need God to give you a notable miracle that can't be denied. I'm here to tell you he's getting ready to do just that. Give us miracles that can't be denied. You're getting ready to be blessed and the favor of God is getting ready to come upon you. And so I want you to join me today and believe God. Whatever it is that you're trusting God to do, don't let nobody tell you that he can't do it because he's a God of miracles and he keeps working them every day. He keeps working a miracle. He's a cancer killer, a tumor dissolver. He's able to go in and bring the high blood up, the low blood down, touch your heart, Whatever it may be, God can do it. If you believe in God for a family member, God can do it. And I want us to touch and agree today and believe God together. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for those that are watching on the various platforms. And I thank you for the miracle of God. I thank you, God, for what you did for me. You brought me out of the hospital from the ICU unit. God, all the way back home, thank you for in this short period of time how you have moved and you begin to touch my body and, and touch my lungs and those things. And God, as I stand today with a notable miracle, there's someone that's watching that needs a miracle from you. They're trusting you right now to bless them and to move for them. And I pray now in the name of Jesus, I pray that you would heal. I pray that you would deliver. I pray that you would set free. I pray that your power would touch them. Whatever area they need this miracle in, whether it's in the workplace, whether it's in the family, whether it's for a loved one, whether it's for their children, their grandchildren, I pray for a miracle to take place. I pray for healing. I pray for deliverance. 
God, you're working right now. And oh God, it's going to be something that can't be denied. Once they come out, once they come through, God, no one's going to be able to say that it wasn't you. You're going to get the glory. You're going to get the praise for doing it and bringing them out. I thank you now that it's so. I thank you now that it's done. And I give your name glory. Eh, sha. I give your name glory and I praise you, God, because I feel your glory and anointing. It is so. Oh, God, as we touch eh, and over the ether, I pray that they be touched now. It's done. Ha, huh? God, it's done now. And we give your name praise. And we give your name glory. In Jesus' name, I touch and agree with them. Hey, my God, I feel the glory of God. It is so, and it is done in Jesus' name. My God, I feel God moving. I feel God blessing, and I feel God doing something. And I want you to hold to this word. Indeed, a notable miracle has been done, and we can't deny it. God's getting ready to do something, and I know we've it's been a year that we didn't expect things to happen but I'm here to tell you that the balance of this year, I want you to speak it to yourself, encourage yourself, tell yourself God's getting ready to give me a notable miracle that cannot be denied. I pray that you've been blessed by this word today. I pray that it is ministered uh, to you and that God has done something uh, great for you. Please share it with someone um, today because I believe that someone's going to need this word. Someone's going to experience this word and we all going to be rejoicing and giving God the glory and the praise for what he's done. Again, I wanted to come live today. I didn't want to record anything. I, I said, God, give me everything I need, the strength and everything I need because I want to be able to talk to them today because I know and I felt in my spirit and I still feel that God is getting ready to do something and there's going to be a word and a miracle that's going to happen for you. Listen, this is what I want to do today. If there's someone that's not saved, uh, I want you to just acknowledge and understand that you can be saved today. Um, you know, God gave me a miracle. He can give you one. And uh, the miracle of salvation, what a great thing it is to have and to know that Jesus is able to save and deliver. And so if you're not saved, I want to extend to you the invitation uh, of salvation. And I want you, if you're not saved, just pray where you are and uh, repeat these words after me. Lord Jesus, I thank you right now that you've given me another opportunity. Others my age are already dead and gone, but I thank you that you've given me this opportunity. And right now, I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. I ask you to wash me in the blood of Jesus. Let his blood be applied to my life. Lord, I'm sorry for all the things that I've done. And I ask you to forgive me right now. Save me. Deliver me. Deliver my mind. Deliver my soul. And I thank you now. And right now, Lord, I confess you as Lord and Savior. And I receive Jesus into my heart right now as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving me. That's all it takes. If you repeated that prayer with me, I want you to know, if you believe it in your heart, that you are saved. I want to hear from you. If you did that, uh, email me. Uh, just send me an email. Let me know that I received Jesus as the Lord and Savior. Just send it to rrcdmartin at gmail.com. rrcd as in Dennis, martin at gmail.com. Thank you so much. Uh, I want to make an appeal to those of you to please um, share with us today in giving. Do me a favor and please share with us in giving today. Uh, I want to challenge uh, 10 people that will sow $100. Then I want to challenge, I want to challenge at least uh, 50 of you that will sow a seed of $40 today and the rest that will sow a seed of at least $20 or whatever you have. I want you to do that. You can use uh, the methods of giving. Uh, you see them on the screen. Uh, you can use the cash app 
R-R-C-O-G-I-C, or you can text to give the word give 770-954-8109, or you can use Give the Five Restoration Revival C-O-G-I-C. If you're on the website, just click to the right and you can uh, do it there at rrcogic.com. If you don't have any way of electronic giving, you can give, uh, send it to us, RRC. 1445 Fulton Avenue, East Point, Georgia, 30344, and uh, just make your checks out to RRC. The Lord bless you, and the Lord keep you. Listen, also, uh, I want to open eChurch today. Those that want to be a, a member, I want to uh, extend to you. Uh, if you can connect with us through e-membership, just go to the website, rrcogic.com, and uh, there, click on uh, e-church, e-membership, you can join the day. I know you don't live in Georgia, but I can be your pastor uh, virtually. Uh, if they've got virtual doctor visits and everything, why we can't have virtual membership? So I want you to be a part of our uh, services and things on today and join on today. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. Listen, I'm going to close out today with this um I know he's here, uh, Brother Br uh, Brandon is here, and he did a video, uh, where well, he did a song years ago, and uh, his uh, late wife, Sister DeVita, um, sent me a song, these, his songs, and there's one song that he did that I always loved, and I got permission from him to uh, actually do it as a video, and put a video to his words of his song that he wrote, and it's entitled, Love is the Healing. Love is a healing. And so I'm so grateful uh, that he allowed me to do it. So as I conclude today, as we uh, leave today, I'm going to uh, play uh, Brother Brandon's video and um, then we're going to be done. But I don't want you to leave. Please enjoy uh, this um, song today. I know it'll minister to you as you are listening today. And so thank you again for being with me. Continue to pray for me. I'm feeling a whole lot better. feel like I'm coming back to myself. And uh, again, thank you for praying for me while I was in the hospital. All right, Brother Brandon, let's listen to Brother Brandon. And the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. Sometimes the wound hides in a deep place, and it's hard to explain the reason for your pain. Sometimes the wound it's painted by your smile, but it flows in the night from the tears in your eyes. Is anybody there? Everybody hear me crying, and if you even care, well, there's only one cure for the dying. Love is the healing. Love is what we need. Love is the healing. Has the whole world run out of love? Love is the healing. Love is what we need. Love is the healing. Does anybody still know how to love? No, no, no. Sometimes the rain falls at a bad time and it washes away plans that you made. Sometimes it falls. Takes over your mind And you question the dreams That you used to believe Is anybody there? Does anybody know I'm trying? And if you even care Well, there's only one cure for the dying Love is the healing Love is what we need Love is the healing has the whole world run out of love? Love is a healing. Love is 
And love. 